Hi Muskies! Today I'm going to tell you about three of my very favorite books. And all three of these books are available um, as ebooks or audiobooks on Mac and Via. So you are able to listen to them or read them while you are home from school. So the first book I have is Turtles All the Way Down. This is by my very favorite author, John Green. Um, and it's all about a fugitive billionaire and the promise of a cash reward. So Turtles All the Way Down is about lifelong friendships. It's got some Star Wars fan fiction and a tuatara. Um, but is it, at the heart of the book is really its main character, Aza Holmes. Um, Aza is a young woman who's just trying to make it through the day with the ever-tightening spiral of her own thoughts. So 16-year-old Aza never intended to pursue the mystery of Russell Pickett, but there's a $100,000 reward at stake, and her very best friend and most fearless leader, Daisy, is eager to investigate. Uh, so together they navigate the short distances and broad divides that separate them from Russell Pickett's life and his son Davis. Um, and throughout the book, one of the biggest things is you just notice that Ava really is trying. Um, she's trying to be a good daughter, she's trying to be a good friend, a good student, and maybe even a good detective. Um, but while also living with the spiral of her own thoughts, Aza deals with terrible anxiety and obsessive compulsive disorder. This really is an excellent book, uh, mostly because of the complex, relatable main character of Aza. Um, if you still aren't hooked on Turtles all the way down, uh, John Green actually read the first chapter of this book on YouTube, and I will put the link down below in the doobly-doo. The second book I'm going to tell you about today is Forgive Me, Leonard Peacock by Matthew Quick. Um, and I typically recommend this book to older high school students, grades 11 through 12, just because of some intense content. So when we first meet Leonard Peacock, it is his birthday. It is also shockingly the day he's going to kill his best friend Asher Beale and then commit suicide. It is the day that he visits the only four people in the world that matter to him and he gives them each a single present before he commits this awful act. It is the day that changes everything. So the main character, Leonard, is a depressed teen who envisions a hopeless future. Sometimes he skips school and rides the subway just to watch the adults that go to and from work. He doesn't think they look happy in either direction, and it makes him think of all of the German atrocities that happened during the Holocaust since he's studying that in school. The adults remind him of the Jews being put on trains and taken to death camps. He remembers his teacher, Herr Silverman, saying some people killed themselves and their families just to avoid being taken away. Leonard concludes that he doesn't know anyone over 18 who wouldn't be better off dead. But the real trigger in his life is that no one remembered Leonard's birthday. Um, his father fled the country years ago. His mother spends most of her time in New York to advance her fashion career. Um, and Leonard's relationships with his teachers are tense, except for the one he has with Ayer Silverman. He has a few acquaintances, but really no friends, um, and none who would remember his birthday. The fact that no one acknowledges the, the monumental day really makes him believe that, the, that his life isn't worth living. The entire book takes place in one day, and when I read it, I could hardly put it down. It is a unique look at school violence um, and suicidal thoughts from the perspective of the possible shooter. So Forgive Me Leonard Peacock really will make you laugh and cry and it will change the way that you think. The last book I'm going to tell you about today is one that you may have read in middle school. It is recommended for grades 6 and older. Um, but if you haven't read it, you need to. Um, and if you already have, then you can read it again. Um, so this is called The Giver by Lois Lowry. And the main character's name is Jonah. And Jonah's world is perfect. Everything is under control. There is no war or fear or pain, and there are no choices. Every person is assigned a role in the community. Jonah lives in a seemingly ideal world. Um, in fact, he's looking forward to December. It's a time of the annual ceremony in which 12-year-olds receive their life assignment determined by the elders. Jonah watches as his friend Fiona is named caretaker of the old, and his cheerful pal Asher um, is assigned assistant director of recreation. But Jonas has been chosen for something special. When his selection leads him to an unnamed man, only called the Giver, and the Giver alone holds the memories of true pain and pleasure in life. It is not until Jonah understands his life assignment as the receiver that Jonah begins to understand the dark secrets behind his fragile community. Now it is time for Jonah to receive the truth, and there is no turning back. So the real wonder in this book is the setting and the way the author sets you up to enter Jonas's world. I'm going to read the first two pages of The Giver to give you a feeling for the book, but also to show you how relevant stories like this are to present day. So it was almost December, and Jonas was beginning to be frightened. No, wrong word, Jonas thought. Frightened meant that deep, sickening feeling of something terrible about to happen. Frightened was the way he'd felt a year ago when an unidentified aircraft had overflown the community twice. He had seen it both times, squinting towards the sky. He had seen the sleek jet almost a blur at high speed go past, and a second later he heard the blast of sound that followed. 
then one more time a moment later from the opposite direction, the same plane. At first, he'd only been fascinated. He had never seen an aircraft so close, for it was against the rules for pilots to fly over the community. Occasionally, when supplies were delivered by cargo planes to a landing across the river, the children rode their bikes to the riverbank and watched, intrigued, the unloading and the takeoff directed to the west, always away from the community. But the aircraft a year ago had been different. It was not a squat, fat-bellied cargo plane, but a needle-nosed, single-pilot jet. Jonas looked around anxiously had, and had seen others, adults as well as children, stop what they were doing and wait, confused, for an explanation of the frightening event. Then all of the citizens had been ordered to go to the nearest building and stay there. Immediately, the rasping voice had said to the speakers, leave your bicycles where they are. Instantly and obediently, Jonas had dropped his bike on its side in the path behind the family's dwelling. He had run indoors and stayed there alone. His parents were both at work, and his little sister Lily was at the child care center where she spent her after-school hours. Looking through the front window, he had seen no people. None of the busy afternoon crew of street cleaners, landscape workers, and food delivery people who usually populated the community. It was the time of day. He saw only the abandoned bikes here and there on their sides. An upturned wheel on one was still revolving slowly. He had been frightened them, then. That sense of his own community silent, waiting, had made his stomach churn, and he had trembled. So all three of these books are available as ebooks on Mac and Via. I'll put a link down in the doobly-doo, um, along with directions on how to log in and create an account in Mac and Via. Uh, Turtles All the Way Down is available on audiobook as well as ebook on Mac and Via. The Giver and Forgive Me Leonard Peacock are both ebooks. Um, that's it. I will be back again next week with more book talks. Um, if you have any requests, uh, leave a comment below and also leave a comment and tell me what you're reading while we're home from school.